It's time for Florida State football. This is the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Jimbo Fisher Show is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Ram, come in and get a great deal on the best trucks during Ram Power Days. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block and Coach Fisher. Coach, uh, tough one at Clemson, and uh, not unlike uh, a lot of recent years. Fourth quarter, it's really anybody's ball game. It was a one-score game. You had the ball driving, and, and, and Clemson's uh, half of the field just didn't work out. Yeah, it did. We had opportunities in the game. That's always a great game. They're a very good team. They've played great. They've had a great year. We had our opportunities in the game, whether it was on offense or defense, even special teams, some things. And uh, we had opportunities to really, I mean, either win the game or make it very, very interesting all the way down and had the ball at the end, but had some opportunities in that game earlier with some fumbles we didn't we could have picked up a couple of throws that were just off the fingertips that were touchdown throws and you know but that, but that's when you play great teams that's what happened again you got to find those inches and I, I say it all the time and it, it kind of become like a cliche but it's the truth and you got to keep fighting for them but you know we had opportunities and we made a few mistakes here and there but the kids competed well but we've got to find a way and I keep saying it every week but we've got to get over that hump. Coach, it was uh, obviously Clemson got out to the lead at, at, at half, mm -hmm. 17 nothing. But, uh, I mean, the, the second half was a completely different story. I mean, there was a lot of fight from your team coming out oh, there. That's... We moved the ball up and down the field and, and had opportunities to score points. And, you know, unfortunately, had to turn over the first points they got on a blitz spit. We should have been picked up. And then we got to get rid of the football. Can't hold it quite so long. But, you know, they got that turnover right there. And then uh, before half, we give up. We got the turnover down in there. They were driving. Then we got the punt back. I got a great punt. We missed our lanes, and they got the point. Kind of, They had the first half. We had the second half right to the end, and wish we could have made those plays when we needed to. But, again, that's what their team's doing right now. They're making the plays they have to. Clemson gets the win. Florida State uh, was right in it, as I mentioned. We'll take a look at the highlights uh, from this game at Clemson Memorial Stadium. We come back here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, the Atlantic Division has come down to Florida State and Clemson for several years running now. So, I mean, this is the marquee game in the conference. It is, and uh, they still had to have it to win. Isn't it ironic that they still had to have it to Clemson the Division? Now here, great. We, I tell you what, we covered kicks really well. Everything was inside the 20. They brought it for four yards out, and we did a good job there. It looked like Hampshire and the guys. It looked like uh, d -Jack, those guys made some plays. Uh, good job there, Derek Noddy. Look, I can't see it. Was Derek Hoskins in there making a play with him. And uh, they moved the ball a little bit in the first half. But Garrett, Brian Burns, who I think had two sacks in the day, a couple of forced fumbles, a recovered fumble. Well, what a day he had now. Uh, get the punt. You now, boy, he hit it just short enough. We got. I wish we got the roll the other way. We got to try to get that one. It was a little bit too short to get. You couldn't get that one. And uh, with the first drive, get the counter play up in there. We, you know, we just they just walked. They're up front now. They were good up front. It took us a while to get used to blocking them. And, uh, they did a good job. Then as the game went on, we did a better job here. Pop a nice little run right here. You know, get about three or four, and then get a third down right here. We're not able to pick it up. Get a little bit of pressure. We have a guy coming open on the corner. Just need to get it. Just, he needs to keep that route just a hair higher. We got to make this a little better throw. We had a chance on the corner route, but they covered it. So uh, good job. To, uh, Logan gets a punt. We did a good job of covering right here. Guys getting all over him. And then they broke a tackle. I mean, we can't. We got to go ahead and just wrap up right there. Now he didn't get much more yardage. But we got to do a better job of wrapping up right there. Here they come back on the drive again. Again, guys, pressure. But they, that's the thing about Brian. When you, when you get out of those rush lanes, and that happened two or three times in the game with critical plays in the game. Trey Marshall makes a nice play there. We got to stay in our rush lanes. Again, played the run. There's Derek Naughty, boy. Just keeps making play after play. That guy's just becoming a heck of a football player. He and Derwin, you saw right there, Derwin had another heck of a Here they get the screen. Good job of getting out and getting the, reacting good. Derwin, I thought, played an excellent game. I thought he played one heck of a football game. Hampshire in there, you see him jiving there for a young freshman's going to be. There they go. Matthew Thomas, who had a lot of tackles in the game, shot up the field right there. And Josh Sweat, who had been playing real well, uh, he did a good job there. Now they got the quarterback counter. That's, we did a great job on their quarterback runs. Matthew and it looks like Burns and Sweat and T Mac. And, uh, look at Roderick was in on that play. Third down. Good job of flushing. Now, we reacted to him. We still can't give up the edge, but we reacted. Good job right there, Matthew and Stanford Samuels. So you know, those young freshmen keep playing more and more. And they get a punt, and they get it back to the 10. And uh, we're able to, even though on this drive, we get, a, we get a couple first downs right here. It's just disappointing because 
We had a third down, we have, we had a little bootleg play here. Got to get, get step on their toes, we had a little shot down the field. And then we had to know we had to push them back and, and get, our, get our shots down the field. It's hard to drive the ball consistently on them. Nice run up inside, a little, little zone play. And Cam, Cam had a couple nice runs in the game here. And we run the counter and bring it back this way on a uh, check. Good job, a nice five yard gain. Cam making good hard runs. Here we get a little speed play. If we're missing, if Keith could get this block right here, this play has the chance to be a really big play. Save about an eight yard gain. Had a chance to really come out. Here's on third down. We just, got to pick this up. Got to slide back out, and then James, the guy can get, get rid of the football, and he's got to see that coming and get rid of it. And uh, but we, we should have had a hat on the hat. We should have slid right back to it. And uh, he took a shot and fumbled. Unfortunately, it turned into a touchdown for them. And, and I know you can't give them points. And that was uh, two critical turnovers in the game for us. That one and the last one that really hurt us. Here they go on the sprint out. They have where You see Bryant's physicality. You know, we got him back there, and he still pushes forward, and makes two yards. I mean, he, he's a big, strong quarterback now. Does a good job. Here they run the quarterback counter. Get back up inside, and that's hard to stop down the goal line because you, you got to watch the edges on the speed sweeps, and they do a good job. And then uh, see Burns getting up high, and you know, our kids uh, playing hard, but just give up that turnover right there. Now this here, get, get a little zone play outside. Cam makes one miss, pick up about five. Not bad, not bad. Good, good first down play. Just trying to keep good balance early. Now here, boy, this is the one we got to hang on to. Good throw by James, right there off Keith's fingertips. We just got, mm, got to go up and make that play. You got to win those 50-50 balls. You're going to play those good big games and big teams. You got to make those 50-50 plays. Good try. Run a power play inside. Good to see Jacquez back in the game. In a nice two or three yard game. Not bad. Uh, play action here. Uh, got to find a tight end. We actually had the tight end sliding weak in a, in a and a nice stand that was coming open, I thought could have got the first down. You got to get down and we got to do a little better job. There, the quarterback run, Derwin and the guys getting to him. And I tell you what, they punched him. Bryant's a tough sucker now. He took some shots in that game. We had Burns and pressure there coming out. That was bad. Matthews got to slide out. In third down, he should have slid right to that receiver and should have been nowhere to go with the football. And he's got to do a better job on that on third down. That give him, because this is what changed the field position. They get this nice tackle by Derwin, caused the ball to come out. He had no catch right there. Good hit. Uh, yeah, they get the screen back on the other side. Right there, there we go. Great job by Matthew Thomas, Brian Burns, T Mac doing a real good job here. Then third down, we, this actually the bad throw allows the penalty to be called because we got pressure and ball got underthrown. So as we do, we're running up on the guy, and it bumps him because of the underthrow. We actually had it covered pretty well, and the bad throw actually created the interference. And we we had two of those. In that. We had him and one on Stanford that they got some interference calls that kept the drive alive and unfortunate. Again, they're running it back up inside on the quarterback counters and zones. That's what Bryant does. He's a big 220, 25 pound guy. Great job right here by Brian Burns. And causes the fumble. Right there, Demarcus Christmas gets all over it, which is huge. And that is a big, big job for us. Now, we come off the goal line, get, get two or three yards, and back up, try to throw it. We have a protection. We get beat on two protections right here in a row. Right here, Josh, Josh Ball's got to stay down inside. He slid back out, he's got to stay down inside. And, and he's getting hit as he's throwing it. Uh, and then we come back on third down, we're lucky here. We get beat off the edge again. Josh gets, gets beat on the edge. And uh, great job by Alec Everly picking the ball up and uh, getting out of the end zone. But we were very fortunate right there. Backed up, but then we get a great punt. Here's one of the things that we hit a big 60 yard punt right here, which is tough on the coverage, but we get two guys out of lane. 47's got to be on the other side right there. And 23's got to avoid on, on as, as a rover, as a gunner all the way down the field and uh, avoid that. And uh, we had two guys get out of lanes and hurt us. And it hurt us right there. Here's their young freshman back, pops one to get a power play. We have it spilled. All we got to do is spill it to the unblocked safety. The linebacker didn't spill it, and uh, they get right up 14-0. Now we come back. James right there's got, we got, Nooney's got to bounce that route to the other side. He's got to widen out, trying to move the football. We're trying to, we're getting behind a little bit, so we want to, and then they, we try to throw a screen. And they, and they on it, want to cut block. Their guy plays it, gets up, tips it. Third down, 15, we're backed up, and uh, they were pressured, so we just try to run it out and punt it, and, uh, of a, you know, get a good punt. He's been hitting the ball really well. It's another good punt. We'll get a nice fair catch, get field position back here. And I believe they had a penalty too and got moved back. Here the quarterback counter. Going to, we're doing a great job. There's Derek Nodding, Matthew Thomas, Jalen Wilkerson. Again, dumping the ball in the flat. Got to make that play, Kane Dope, but that's all right. You see Josh in there making plays. Matthew Thomas out there making the play. It was a good job. Derek Nodding, get pressure on this guy. See, we get another penalty here, and I can't see that one. That was the one I, I do have a question on. They called him on a face mask, and that was a little tough one. And then that was the two tries here they get points on. It was all based off of them uh, 
getting third down pickups on, on penalties. You know, our defense, unfortunately, was doing a good job. Then got the penalty. Here they, they, they hand it off. It being quarterback being keeping. But Derwin and Matthew run him down, minimize the game. And uh, they pop it back up inside. Did a nice run. They're moving it. And we end up uh, here. Toss the fumble right here. Now this, oh, Lord almighty. Here's when you're trying too hard. Matthew thought he had it and was going to just pick it up and score, and this overran the ball. Looked as his eyes came off of it as he went to pick it up, looking up to where he was going. And you know, sometimes that's our problems right now. We we we're trying so hard, we get in our own way a little bit. And unfortunately, they got three points out of that, which ended up being critical in the game. Could have got that. Now Keith has a nice return here. We get out to the 20-something yard line, uh, but we had a penalty, so we had a block in the back, got pushed back. Then we come back here. Great job, great check down. Got to Keith Gavin right here. Nice throw by. James was moving the football right here in two minutes before the half. And uh, they come back, finds Keith on the backside. They rolled the coverage strong. He come back, man, nice read of the curl route on the backside. We got it. Moving in. And this is one we have back. We had the inside seam out we had to have. Or if we're going to throw this ball here, to, to, we need to back shoulder it. We need to take some air off of it and put it, you know, a 6'6 guy on a 5'10 guy. He's working on it back shoulder. And, you know, he was just off a little bit in that first half. We had to get our rhythm. We had chances to keep the point. Got a turnover down there, and we gave a punt return. Then we had a chance to pick up a fumble, and they got three points. And now they're off our turnover down there, too. So they, they controlled the line of scrimmage in the first half, in, in my opinion, for the most part, especially against our offensive line. In the second half, we did a much better job. And we'll see the second half highlights in a little bit. But, Coach, a uh, couple of big plays there. Brian Burns really had a terrific game, but forced two fumbles both in the red zone. Uh, yes. Again, you wanted to fall on one, but three points out of two red zone trips. That's pretty good defense Well, you there. get that. You get, uh, both of them are on those zone reads, and he's coming off the edge. And he, he's so athletic, he can play the quarterback and the back at the same time. You get those guys around. Athletic, and then his reach, and he got his hands in there when they're pulling the ball back and slapping the ball, and made two some really big plays, and I thought played excellent in the game. Clemson with the lead at half, but uh, it gets interesting in the second half. We'll take a look at those highlights when we come back here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Andre Francois knew this injury was different from the moment it happened. I knew something was wrong because usually they'll ask me when I get sacked or when I'm on the ground, did I hear a pop? And I usually don't, but this time I did hear a pop and I knew something was wrong and I seen it swelling up immediately while I was laying on the turf. So I knew the trainers were gonna have to come out and take me back in, but I was just praying and hoping it wasn't out for the season. The torn patellar tendon was indeed season ending for Francois who has never had a significant injury in his football career. It hurt me bad because I didn't know, I didn't know football can be taken away from, from me so easy. Um, I love it with all my passion and heart, and I put all my time and effort and heart into it. So I didn't know that it could just be gone in the blink of an eye. And now knowing that, it just makes me um, you know, cherish the game more. I could see the look on his eye, you know, dis disappointment, and I you know, just want to be able to help the team. but. You know, it's not his time. You know, I had to go through the same thing, but he, he wants to help us. And the redshirt sophomore is helping. While he rehabs his knee, Francois continues to help lead his teammates, especially fellow quarterback James Blackman. Just being there for everybody as much as I can. Trying to be there um, for Jay Black, you know, encouraging him when I can, um, being in his ear. Because I was in his position too, I know what it takes. Um, usually I just try to, you know, encourage him and make sure that he stays positive. They handled it very well, you know, especially lately, you know, he's been at practice, Ronda's watching, he's definitely been at uh, Jay Black's ear a lot, you know, just helping him out with reads, you know, understanding, you know, that he went through the same thing last year with Louisville, and then he came back from it, so he just gave me Jay Black advice on it. Even though Francois won't step back on the field in 2017, he hopes his injury will help make him better moving forward really, you know, matures you as a player. You know, it helps you to see the game from a coach's point of view. It helps you to see how to practice or how practice is going when you're not in, or just, you know, the little things that, you know, the coaches see that we don't see because we're on the field. You see those things when you're not playing and you're injured. All that's left is more rehab, and hopefully Francois will be back on the field for the Seminoles in 2018. Lane Hurt, Seminoles.com.
Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show, Coach. Uh, you get the ball coming out in the second half, and uh, and really, you said it earlier. Clemson had the first half, but you guys won the second half. Well, we did. We had a chance. We had come out. We were aggressive. We had some things we wanted to get to in the first half. We didn't, so we come back out here. Hit a nice play, the first play, and get this to the second play. After that, we had a nice 10 toward yard gain. Got some things going. I got a couple late hits on the quarterback, and then uh, running game right here. We got to make that block. We got we got to pop that up there and get a little more yards in our running game. That was the only thing. We threw the ball extremely well in the second half, as far as creating plays and opportunities. James here, we should have set down a nice third down pickup. Tackle's got to squeeze that down. Doesn't need to take that hit. Come off on the wrong guy. But uh, here, we get a nice little uh, counter play up inside. But again, they they're, they're, they played the run really well. They played the run really well. And uh, there he is, nice slant route to Nooney up inside. We hit the seam route. He does a real nice job. We're moving in right here, get a third and one, get popped. They, they, they bring a blitz, pop us about a half a yard short, a yard short. So we got it right here, fourth and yard and a half, too, and uh, we get a nice little, we have a play action, something we wanted to, we knew we wanted to go to, and we got it. It's just <laughs> hot off our fingertips. We hit that thing, I mean, it's, it's a walk-in touchdown, and, you know, the game right there can really start to put pressure on. And they pick up a nice third down pickup here. Unfortunately, they, uh, they made that pickup, and we need to get off the field there on third down. We had opportunities on offense right there to get scored the first drive of the daggone second half. Good job about Naughty and the guys. Defense keeps playing hard, keep mixing it in. You know, they had a little dump screen. There's Tavark McFadden and uh, Christmas out there hustling. He's been playing really good football. And they get back. Nice job by Derwin on the blitz, causes problems. Now we got lucky. You got to see that ball. T Max on the guy, but uh, safety's getting over the top and got to see it. And here they get a punt. They punt it to us and uh, DJ goes over and gets the ball, fielding it really well. Nice, nice cut right here. Unfortunately, we get a late hiss where uh, Emmett gets a a uh, targeting call on the back there, and you can't do that. You know, targeting's got to be not just on tackling guys. You can be blocked too, and you can't do that. Cost us, moved us back. Here we have, he just high on the throw. We got the tight end wide open. He James just high on the ball. Come back inside. Uh, has him again. Has Izzo again one on one, just overthrows him. Twice he overthrows him, and we thought we liked the tight end matchup in this game, and then uh, we didn't get it. Here they get the punt. Our guys are getting after him pretty good right there. You see Hampshire doing a great job. Boy, he's going to be a really good player, I'm telling you. In time, he's just going to keep growing. He's so athletic. You know, they get, they get a little screen play out here. We got to slide and get off the block. We just didn't get off the block right here on the screen play. And they get a little swing screen and uh, dump it down. There they go, throw the out route. Got to keep pressing it. Got to keep pressing it. But we had a guy supposed to slide under. Our, 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 we had an underneath guy that didn't get out there quite as far. And they run the counter play back up inside. And... Uh, Moving the football. We're still, guys are still playing hard. We're still down 17. Uh, moving. They did a great job here. There you go. They thought they had a guy open. Burns makes a big play right there. He and Sweat getting pressure. They punish and, and get us way on back here. The DJ does a nice job fielding that ball about 10, 12 yard line. Doesn't let it bounce and get on back here the one or two. And uh, we come out of there and have a little run at play. Uh, pick up about eight or nine right here to uh, Auden. It was great to see him out there playing much healthier in that game. Here we hit the zone play back up inside, get the first down. Need the inside cut right there. Missed the inside cut, and had a little bigger play maybe. Cam's still doing a nice job. We just keep mixing around, just trying to get, get, get in the rhythm here offensively. Got to go route right down the sidelines, and they grab us, and uh, we miss it. And they got a holding call, we get an interference call. They got their hands on us, and uh, good to get some of those back. Here we get the little hook curl right back over here to Auden. Keep going back and forth over to him. Does a nice job. And we had the slant route, and that was a good call. His left arm is hooked all around him and draped him. He had him hooked on a, on a third and two, and it was a good call by them. Here we go back to the seam route. Very similar to the last play of the game we had picked. They had two verticals, and they went to cover two, so we hit the guy right down the middle. Derek, we actually could have been a uh, horse collar. We are up, get a hurry-up play right here before they could get their goal line uh, defense set up, and uh, great to see Jacquez back in the game again. His short, power, short yardage power running does a great job. He gets in the end zone, 17-7. Now it's a two-play two game. We're a two-play game, and have a heck of a chance right here to get back in the ball game. Our, our energy is high, our defense is playing well offensively. We've moved the football every drive. And uh, again, they're going when they get, you know, get down, they go that quarterback run. And he's a very good runner. And our guys are swarming to the football though. Here you know, they hit it again. Guys do a great job. Good job by D Jack in there. Good job by Derwin. Pressure and they just they make a high throw. They miss, they miss the out route right there. We get the ball back and we're gonna have a chance to go down right here. And they, they hit that rugby punt. Boy, that's tough. It's a great job he got that on that one hop. That thing can run. Them rugby, sometimes you can't catch them because they're kicking so short. So we come back. This is a mistake. He's got to throw the crossing route. And it's, it's the play before. He took a sack on the crossing route. Right there, he's got to work the hook to the field. He had it to the field. Just, just work to the boundary. Shouldn't have. And here, third down. 
we get we little double move and we had Nooney all the way down there for a big play. If we can hit it, it's a touchdown. And then we just, again, off the fingertip. That's two touchdowns that we've just let get away from. It's just off our fingertips and already in the second half. But we see our still defense, but we know we're in the game. We know we have opportunities. You know you got life. And there's hope in there that we can just keep doing the same thing. Our guys are playing. There's Jacob Pugh rushing those guys. Now, that's the one thing, Brian, again, running out of that pocket a couple times and changes field position. Now, you know you don't score. Now you're punting from midfield instead of backed up on your own 20. That's big. The back does a good job. Hampshire, that's a young back for them. Doing a real nice job. And they run the inside, and Chris is huge. Christmas makes a big play here. It was like a second and three, and we lose a yard, and they go back to on third down and uh, get a little high throw, and all of a sudden they got a punt to us again. So we're backed up this time on the 15. And uh, again, DJ does a great job fielding a fair catch and makes a great decision, gets the ball back. We come back out right here. Uh, had a little cross, and I had the tight end route again that they, they covered, so he checked it down, did a great job. Now he's really getting in a groove here. Now they got a blitz, he dumps it to the, the back hot in the flat, now we pick up 25. So now you got them on, all right, they're blitzing in, you're getting the hots, you're giving up big plays, now we hit the trick play right here. We're able to get the uh, handoff, reverse, flea flicker, get it back, get the tight end back down the sideline. Watch Auden Tate right here, he's running the post route, gets his guy down, goes back and sets up a shield block for Ryan Izzo. And all of a sudden now, we're in the beginning of the fourth quarter, and it's a one-score game, 17-14. You, you know, when you're not down three scores, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a heck of a lot. It's just two plays. You can make plays like that, and uh, all of a sudden now it's 17-14, and boy, we feel good. This is one this point. We tackled the kickoff guy on the 10. This is where you hope you get a three and out, because you could pin them back right here now from the 10-yard line and be huge. They get four or five right here, and they get this pitch, and they got the first down. Great tackle by Derwin here. Gets about four. Yeah, they get the boot route. We can know the route, he's sitting on it, break on it. They know they run that switch route. They go to it in big time situations and uh, they executed it. Now the quarterback run right here, good job right there. You say with Derek and the guys, and that's where the fumble calls. We got the ball on the 40 yard line, guys are fighting for the ball, and man, it's disappointing right here. Because we get the ball six minutes to go on the 40, and we get what we want. We get Auden one on one outside, and they got single high coverage. You can see they go single high. We got Auden on the seam right outside right there. And we, wanted, we had 6'6 six, six on about six foot, and we wanted to throw that back shoulder that's at vertical, which we've been hitting. And, then, you know, we've been throwing the football. We felt good. I wanted to go. We know we could get five or six yards after this and be in the field goal range, but then two downs, we we'll see what happened. But we wanted to go for the win. We didn't want to, just didn't want to do that. And then, unfortunately, they get the score out of this drive right here. We had opportunity. You just can't throw that ball down the middle, especially on first down. If you don't get what you want, like we told them, just throw it away. They break two tackles and pop a run right here. And... Uh, that if we could help them to a field goal, we still had a heck of a chance. And momentum of the game turned right there, six minutes to go. We had the ball in the 40 going in and uh, got, got the guy we wanted. We just, we just didn't make the right decision and you know, we'll learn from it and move on. Now we get it back, we're down 10 and got to throw it right here and really had some chances. Uh, we, get, we get a nice drive right here, I mean, nice little run and gets out of here, but get three or four on first down. But if we get a quick score right here, this is the one we missed right here. You see Nooney right here? They actually busted the coverage. If he keeps that ball higher and we hit it, there's a chance to score on it and we could get back right here. But, you know, they, they got back and threw it a little bit flat and they we running out the clock and they, they pop one down and get a score. And like I say, it's a one score game with us with the ball with five minutes to six minutes to go. And, you know, unfortunately, we didn't do what we needed to do to make the play. And, uh, you know, that's, that's coaches. We got to get them to, get them to do that. And Dabo's done a great job. The program's done a, they got a heck of a job right there. They've done a great year, had a great year. 31-14, the final. Clemson gets the win. Coach, uh, the energy on the sideline as you cut it to 17-14. Just uh, you know, how long has that play been in the arsenal? That double reverse flea flicker. Bit? We've had we've had it in there and just be at the right time, called it the right place. We know this week we thought of having a great opportunity. And you know, again, again, commend our kids for the fight, their effort. Again, just got to relax and make the play at the right time. We made some big plays to get back in that thing, competed against a great football team, and you're right there with the ball, and you just got to relax and, and make those, you know, make the, all right, that, that, that play's over with. Get, let the excitement go, go back to the next, all right, we got the ball again, that's, now what do I got to do to execute this play? What do I got to do to execute this play? And we just got to keep educating and do a better job. Get another chance this week. It's homecoming in Tallahassee. We'll talk about that matchup when we come back here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Today's final stats are brought to you by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites.
Inside the Helmet is brought to you by Hyundai. Welcome to Inside the Helmet. I'm Katherine Phillips, joined by junior Brock Rubel. First thing, did you play any other sports growing up? Uh, I played a lot of sports growing up. Football was the last one I played. I played uh, baseball, basketball, track and field, indoor soccer when I was like seven. So I played pretty much everything I could. So when did you decide to stick with football? Uh, stick with football? Uh, junior year of high school. My body kind of chose it for me. I was basketball mostly. Uh, big time into basketball and then body just took over. So what is your first or your favorite memory from junior football? Oh, like in high school? Or younger? Um, my favorite football memory before Florida State was uh, my senior year we won basically what our conference championship because private schools can't play in state and uh, it's the first time our school won it in a bit so you know that's probably the best memory before Florida State. Who would you say has been your biggest role model throughout your football career? Oh, my dad. Uh, he played ball at UNC in the 80s, and um, he's like one person that, outside of this coaching staff that you know I talk to mostly when it comes to any guidance I need with football stuff. So did you grow up watching UNC, or were you a Florida State oh, fan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, my whole house was Tar Heeled because like my dad went there, mom went to Elon, so North Carolina was big. Mostly because I was a basketball player, so that's mostly what I watched. But uh. so, what was it about Florida State? Um, coaching staff, um, obviously the tradition here, um, and me not being that much of an experienced football player, I felt like this coaching staff in particular was best suited for me to, I guess, make up the ground that I needed to. All right. So, do you have any hidden talents? Um, I'm pretty much an open book, so. Uh, if, if you know me, I don't really think so, not really. Any I, weird talents? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. I'm very much what you see was what you get. I okay. can't sing or anything like that. I'm not crazy, <laughs> no. So if you're not playing football or studying, what would you be doing? Sleeping, <laughs> for sure. That, that, that takes up pretty much all your time. So what would you say is your favorite form of social media? I'm not a big social media guy. Um, anyone who knows me, like I didn't have Wi-Fi growing up because I was just middle of nowhere. So social media is something that I got because I was told to get it. Actually, my coaches in high school said, yeah, you should probably get this because um, because coaches can't call you in high school, sometimes they can use like certain sorts of social media to talk to you. So that's why I got it and I just haven't deleted them. So what about your teammates are big on Snapchat. Do you, you stay away from that too? Uh, I don't have a very good snap. I'm not, if you snap me, I probably won't do, get you back for a while. Okay, so your first time running out of the tunnel at Florida State, what was that like? Do you um, remember it? Yeah, it was. It obviously was amazing, but it was kind of weird because that was my first game I ever went into where I knew I wasn't going to play because that was the year, you know, Bobby Hart, Cameron Irvin, and I'm a little freshman. I'm not playing. So it was awesome to see the environment and stuff like that, but it was also kind of weird and because like, I knew I wasn't going to play. So there's some conflicting things in there, but um, mostly, obviously, running through the tunnel at Florida State and then watching Osceola throw the spear in the ground, like, it was amazing. What's been your favorite memory in your time here? There's a couple good ones. Uh, my, fresh, my true freshman year beating Notre Dame, was that was pretty crazy. Getting my first start at, like versus Clemson, 19 years old at their place was pretty nuts. Um, I'd say last year, Orange Bowl, uh, that, that shootout we had with Michigan was, I mean, it's just chock full of great memories here for sure. So you're graduating this semester. Yes. What are you looking forward to beyond football? Um, well, I have a criminology degree, so any of the cool stuff, I'm looking at um, Secret Service, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say I know exactly what I'm doing, but uh, I am looking for sure. All right. Well, that's Brock Rubel. Thanks for joining us for Inside the Helmet. We'll see you next time. With storied tradition and distinguished excellence combined within an electric atmosphere, there's nothing quite like a game day at Doe Campbell Stadium.
However, this unique experience would not exist without the valued services of the Florida State Facilities Management Team. It takes a lot of people that, that most fans don't see or really even think about. Our typical crew for a game day around Oak Campbell Stadium, if you include our parking folks and our concession folks, is between 3,500 and 4,000 people. With seemingly endless responsibilities, it takes a focused leader to oversee this industrious and often challenging process. That man is Director of Game Day Operations, Stuart Pierce. Stuart's one of the great people that I've met in this business. His attitude and his leadership really provides a, a very steady um, motion for us as we move forward. I, I tell people I'm a very visible portion uh, just because of the role that I play, but there are so many folks that are working behind the scenes. Basically, I stand on the shoulders of giants. If Stuart is um, Batman, I'm Robin. Uh, we, are, we are attached at the hip. Um, throughout the week, throughout the game, we know where each other stands during the game. We're strategically placed so people can have access to us. But our game day staff, our facilities and events and operations team, I mean, their, their efforts, um, they are the ones that are the most instrumental in being able to carry out and make this experience so positive uh, for so many. There's so many moving parts on Friday that we really try to get a lot of our stadium operations pieces done. Uh, in advance of that so Friday we can really be there to help people and, and help our, our partners get everything moved in and squared away. Highlighting this lengthy list of tasks is getting the television truck situated for the spotlight, moving the visiting team into their locker rooms the day before kickoff, and painting the game field. I consider it uh, almost like a Thanksgiving dinner. You have to have all the pieces that come together to make everything turn out to be uh, a wonderful event and that's what we do here. Once this process is complete, Pierce and his staff are able to pass the torch over to fans supporting their beloved Knowles. They're very well aware when they walk into Doak Campbell Stadium that a lot of hands have gone in towards creating that. Everybody works together, everybody knows the common goal is to create the best possible experience that we can create. And when you've got a team of folks that, that that's their main focus, it really comes together beautifully. Fulfilling each job with precise execution, their work helps fans enjoy each game in a safe, comfortable environment. We just want them to come, celebrate, you know, support the team, and go home safely. So our end goal is that we remain undefeated in terms of a security and event staff team. No matter what the result of the game being played, State has won it. this unit always remains unconquered. We're all working together towards the same end, and that is to support this great university, uh, to cheer on some tremendous student athletes, uh, and to be able to do so in a way that uh, brings everybody uh, the excitement of what Florida State football is, both in Tallahassee and around the world. I mean, Florida State for years is one of the greatest traditions in college athletics, and for me to be able to be a small part of that every day, it's awesome. Although they may not always be recognized by most, this remarkable staff remains the key ingredient towards showcasing the university's unparalleled qualities on a national stage. I'm Blake Devine for the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnowlesContest.com. Welcome back, Coach. This week at 12 noon kick, Delaware State comes in for homecoming, and uh, you know your job is simple. You got another chance. You got to win, win a couple more, try and get bowl eligible. Exactly right. We got three games left in the season. We need to play three great games, and it starts this week. We got to play Delaware State. We got to go out and play, take care of the ball, run it, throw it, do the things we got to do. And then play another great defensive football game, and then go. Then we got to line up and play the Gators, and we got to line up and play ULM. But we got to do it one at a time, and go have a great, great week of practice, and we still can achieve some things. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go play three really good football games, but we got to start this week with one football game. It's also senior day, which uh, fans should be aware of, so your senior football yes. players will be honored and saluted with their families before exactly. the game. Yeah, a few of those guys were on that national championship team back in 2013, and then guys in 14, 15, 16, you know, three straight New Year's, day, New Year's Six Bowl games and what they've achieved here. And please come out and honor those guys and, and how much it means for them to play here and what they're still doing to, to finish this season off the right way. All right, and again, 12 noon kick at Doe Campbell this Saturday. We'll come back and wrap up this week's edition of the show right after this.
Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Katherine Phillips alongside Chef Travis Johnson, Executive Director of Seminole Dining here at Florida State. He's going to walk us through a game day meal using natural gas. Chef, what do you have for us today? Well, today we're going to do a Southern Classic, a Southern Sweet Potato Hash. And when we like to cook, we like to think of local items. So we have some local sweet potatoes, some Southern Andouille sausage, a little bit of our onions, our peppers, and our celery, which we call Trinity. And together, they're gonna to bring a lot of different flavors uh, cooking in cast iron today on our gas stove. Okay, so we have all this prepared, what's first? All right, well, let's get started. So first, we wanna turn up our flame and uh, allow our cast iron to get nice and hot. And the first thing we're gonna add is our andouille. Now, can you tell us exactly what andouille is? So an andouille is a, like a southern style smoked sausage that has a lot of different Cajun spices in it. As you notice in front of us here, we don't have a lot of seasoning. What we call uh, seasoning is our onions, our peppers, and our celery. And then we're getting all of our, our salts and our flavors from our andouille. And we're getting our sweetness from our sweet potatoes and some of the sugars as we caramelize our onions and our peppers and our celery. So it's really bringing all those natural flavors together uh, to create this wonderful dish that you can serve as a side, you can serve it as an entree. Um, it's great for tailgate. And now you can see the flame here. What's the benefit of that? Having a controlled flame allows you to control the heat a little bit more. Uh, we like using them because uh, you get instant heat. Uh, you can control the highs and the lows. As you can tell, we're getting a really good sizzle on our sausage right now. All right, so now that this is starting to brown, we're gonna go ahead and add our onions. And a lot of the style cooking we work with is all done in one pot. And it's not because we don't want to do additions. <laughs> it's because what we're doing is we're building a lot of the flavors. Now we're going to go and add our green peppers. You can see how the onions are starting to get a little more translucent. Uh, you want to lightly cook your green peppers. And then it brings us to our next ingredient, our celery. And again, we're just continuing to build the flavor. I haven't added any oil or any salts you to this dish. You can smell the flavor coming off of it. We're starting to uh, bring all those flavors together. You can get with the aromatics. Uh, next, we're gonna add our garlic. So we just took some fresh ground garlic. And it's important to add the garlic a little bit later because we wanna make sure that we're cooking it, uh, but we, we are not burning the garlic. And I've just got a little bit of unsalted butter. And when we're cooking, we always cook with unsalted butter because we like to control the amount of salt that goes into a dish. And by having the unsalted butter, it allows us to have the fats and the flavor without it becoming too salty or adding too much sodium to the dish. So as this continues to cook, we are gonna add just a little bit of our Cajun seasoning. And our Cajun seasoning today is a light blend that we put together that has some cumin, some granulated onion, some granulated garlic, paprika, red pepper, chili powder, and black pepper. You got and a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> and again, as you notice, in that seasoning, there's no salt. Look at that, it's got some really great color to it. That looks amazing. We're just about there. The next piece we wanna add is our sweet potatoes. Again, uh, locally grown, we have cut these and we blanched them. So we boiled some water, dropped them in for about five or six minutes, and then we shocked them and put them back in the cooler so they cool back down. And now they're at the perfect uh, consistency, which we call al dente, which if you were to take one and bite it, has a little bit of a crunch to it. But and that's al dente. Al dente. <laughs> and we want to cook it that way because it's going to go into this dish and we don't want the uh, sweet potatoes to break down. Gotcha. And once we add the sweet potatoes, now we really just want to fold it in. So we're going to let this cook. So we're about 30 seconds to a minute away from having a, a great southern style sweet potato hash. Okay, so when do you like to serve this meal? Do you do breakfast anywhere? <laughs> I would eat this for breakfast. I'd eat it for lunch. Um, I typically make it for the family for uh, holidays. Okay. Uh, it's just, again, a great dish. And if you want to make it vegetarian and, and pull the uh, sausage out, then you may want to add just a little bit of salt at the end just to bring out some of the flavors you'd naturally get with the sausage. We're just about ready, so let's go ahead and serve up a dish. You can see all the beautiful color from the caramelization and the sweet potatoes. And we're going to finish this with just a few fresh green onions. We're ready to go. Right, Would you like to try? I'll go for All it. All right. Oh my gosh. That's so good. That's good. That's amazing. 
All right, well, for full details on this recipe and more information on how you can incorporate natural gas at home, at your business, or at your next tailgate event, go to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Coach, just some final thoughts. You know, we talked about Brian Burns and how well he played, and I know your interior D tackles have played great this year. But you mentioned Derwin James. He really, to me, he really tackled well in space. He's done it all year, but against Clemson, it was impressive. He is. I mean, and there's some standards he, you know, people think him to live up to that are kind of, I don't say unrealistic, but you know, you, everything. If he doesn't do something spectacular, but man, he's just playing really good, solid football. He's making plays on the ball. He's deflecting. He's tackling in space. And you know, and Derwin is he is a super because he does so many things for us and allows other guys to do so many things. And I thought he played great. Get a chance to see Derwin and the Seminoles back at home this week against Delaware State. It's homecoming. We'll see you at Doe Campbell Stadium, and we'll see you here next week on the Jimbo Fisher Show. This has been the Jimbo Fisher Show, brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Over $30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling. SunTrust, the official bank of Florida State Athletics. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe.